everybody, we're here with Dr. Scott Cherry, Axiom's Chief Medical Officer, here to talk about the coronavirus and other concerns surrounding um, infectious disease or any sort of outbreak and what we can do to help support you and your employees. Thanks, Dr. Scott. We just need to know a little bit more about the COVID virus and coronavirus. There's a lot of information out there and Axiom as an occupational health provider is helping our clients figure out what to do next. So can you tell us a little bit about what COVID-19 is and, and what, where it came from? Sure, it uh, be my pleasure. You know, there's a lot of viruses out there. In fact, when we think of infectious disease, you can think of it as a bacteria, a virus, and a fungus. And so COVID is, is a virus and it's actually uh, a type of coronavirus which is actually quite common uh, for humans to get kind of the common cold things like that uh, coronavirus is or this COVID-19 is different than the typical coronaviruses that we see in humans as uh, this specific type was found mostly in animals mm -hmm. and it had a mutation and then it started causing disease in humans and so it's it's a it's a although other coronaviruses cause disease in humans this is a new type of coronavirus that's causing a, a new type of uh, disease. Okay. How is it different from those other coronaviruses? So, uh, you know, the typical coronavirus that causes disease in humans cause, cause really the common cold. So, you, you know, you feel off, you have headaches, sniffles, things like that. You may be out of work a little bit or not, but um, it doesn't cause severe disease. And so what's interesting about COVID-19 is that it's potentially causing severe disease and especially in certain populations. Okay. How is that transmitted? Is it you know. <laughs> coughing how do people get it sure you know and so there's always these talks about you know airborne and and that's usually the most uh, scary way of something's transmitted you see that in the movies and and things like that and so technically the the current um, understanding of COVID-19 is that it's not airborne but it's still transmitted um, through kind of the droplets that as we're speaking even if you're not formally spitting you, you have very small particles called droplets that kind of go out a few feet and then settle out on to uh, the, the tabletops, things like that. So it's technically a, a droplet transmission. And so um, the way people actually get it will be as if they're getting coughed or sneezed on directly, or if those particles are, are settling out into the environment, um, another person would touch those particles and then touch their face. Okay. Um, so that's the primary transmission. So if somebody thinks that they've been exposed or has knows somebody that's sick, what are some of the symptoms that they're portraying at that point? So by far the most common symptom in the uh, confirmed cases that they've been tracking by the World Health Organization is fever. Mm -hmm. So about 87% of, of, of those that have been confirmed to have the COVID-19 have fever. Okay. And then the second and third most common are cough and then shortness of breath. Okay. So, you know, they're very generalized symptoms. And so, you know, obviously we call it like a flu-like uh, illness where you have kind of fever, chills, body aches, things mm -hmm. like that. So Okay, so if somebody thinks that they may be exposed or having symptoms, what would the treatment be? How would they get help? You know, so um, really it's supportive care at this time. There's not really a known vaccine to either prevent or treat it like other vaccines, like you've heard of getting your flu shot, mm -hmm. which is a, is a vaccination. And so, um, and also there's antivirals that can limit the, the course of a lot of viral infections. So there's not really a, an effective like medicine. So the most, um, the most effective treatments are what the CDC calls non-pharmacologic interventions. Mm -hmm. And so you might see this in kind of the common flu season where it's personal hygiene. So you don't cough or sneeze into your hand. Um, you're washing your hands frequently. And then when you're sick, you don't go into work. You, you do what you call social isolation where you stay home. You, you don't go out into public, things like that. Okay. So if you're an employer and you're trying to deal with how do I help my employees in this situation? There's a lot of worry and concern. What would you suggest for employers? So really, you know, discussing with your HR department about creating a policy that 
that would apply to all employees is, is my suggestion. And you really want to determine, you know, how does this policy allow those who are um, sick or potentially sick to stay out of the workforce and engage into that social isolation? Because again, social isolation was found to be the most effective prevention strategy um, from either getting ill or, or having the, the, um, the, the risk of um, more and more of those getting um, uh, infected. So you can really drastically uh, decrease the infection rate. So um, having an AHR policy that has a screening program in place would be very helpful. Okay, great. Well, thank you, Dr. Scott Cherry, for your help today. Clients and, and everybody out there, please reach out if you need additional resources. We're here to help.